Alright, so here I'm going to show you how we can use the Xilinx um, toolset to simulate a simple digital logic circuit. And the advantage of using the Xilinx tools to do this is that later we'll move to programmable logic and use the same tools. So when you open the project navigator, it might open the previously used project. Um, you can either close that or ignore it and just go File, New Project, and it'll pop up a wizard here. So check the save location, is somewhere you like it, and then just give it a name, schematic logic. Um, for the top level source type, make sure schematic is selected. It might default to something else. Hit next. Um, on this page, you set up what device you will be physically using it with. So even though we're just simulating, we'll still set it all to the same stuff. So you can set general purpose product category and select the XC9500XL CPLD. Um, select XC9536XL and the VQ44 package. Um, everything else should be okay now. So if the screen looks like that, hit next, hit finish. Uh, so this is the main window you'll see. Um, along the top here, there's two main options for the view. You can either view the implementation view or the simulation. So for now, just switch to simulation, and um, you'll have this empty view here. So right-click in that area, and hit New Source, or go File, uh, New, either one. So we'll hit New Source here, and it pops up a New Source wizard. So select the schematic as the type, give it a name, I'll say Main Logic, um, and hit Next, Finish. So after a second here, it'll open this window. And this is your schematic entry window. Um, so along here you have a toolbar for connecting wires, giving names, adding ports. Um, and so let's add an AND gate, for example. So you can either hit this Add Symbol button, which gives you some default symbol, or just along the bottom here, this tab, go to the Symbols tab. Um, so this gives you all the symbols you can add. So under the Category, go down to Logic and then you'll see the various gate types popping up here. Um, so for example, AND2 is a two input AND gate. So let's add that to the schematic. Uh, hit ESCAPE once you've put it down and that cancels the entry. So it's looking a little small. Let's zoom in with the plus here to give us something more reasonable. Um, so now we have to add some inputs and outputs. So everywhere you can make a connection, there's a little square here. So for example, we can use the Add Wire tool on the toolbar. Um, and you could add a wire to connect it to the rest of your circuit. Uh, we don't have any more circuits, so I'll just put a wire here, for example, and hit Escape. Notice how the end of the wire, it has this red box to indicate there's a connection that's missing. Um, so we need to add an I.O marker here and this gives us a port connection that we can add some input and output to. So hit the add IO marker. Um, for the type you can either leave it automatic which should automatically select based on the gate or in this case I'll s explicitly say add an input marker. So add an input marker here say another one to that part. Now we want an output so change this to add an output marker here and click there. If it works, you should see those little squares disappear. If you miss them, then they might, they'll still be there if you click, for example, right beside it. Um, so now we want to rename these something more useful. Uh, so click on the port, it goes red like that, then right click on it and hit rename port. So a little window pops up and let's say rename the entire net to A. And we'll rename this one to B, and we'll rename the output to Y. Um, so this is a really simple schematic, so save it, and then you can hit the X to close that. And this brings you back to your main view. Now if we're still in the simulation tab here, um, you can see we just have the single file. What we need now is something that drives that, so you know, the the inputs and outputs, something that applies some stimulus, they call it. Uh, so right click and hit new source and this window pops up again, except this time select Verilog text fixture. Um, give it a name, 
test bench, for example. Hit next. Uh, you select the file that's going to be associated with this test bench. Uh, main logic is fine. Hit finish. Um, and now you'll notice that in this view, the test bench is the top level, they call it. So this file is controlling the other file. If you gave them different names, there'll be different uh, names here too. It doesn't matter as long as it still has that same hierarchy. Um, so by default it opens this test bench file. Um, so now we have to give it some inputs and outputs. So I'm gonna delete these lines between if def auto init um, and the text there because we're gonna just add entirely our own um, file. So for Verilog, which is the language here, we type initial begin and then end. So everything in between here is going to be run once and then stopped. Um, and it's pretty simple. So say we want A equal to logic 0, B equal to logic 0. So these are the two inputs. Um, and now we need to wait a little bit. So we use this hash sign 5, say, and a semicolon. It's critical you have semicolons at the end, it's just part of the syntax. So that'll apply 0, 0, and then wait 5 units. So then we'll say set b equal to 1, and again wait 5 units. Um, now I'm going to set a equal to 1, b equal to 0, wait 5. Uh, finally a equal to 1, b equal to 1, wait 5. And now we're done, we've tried all the inputs, so we use this finish statement. Uh, just dollar sign finish and you can save it. If you've made a typo like for example I forgot a semicolon here uh, what you'll see is some syntax errors will pop up so you can look through that and say okay line 37 oh the errors before that so we fix that. Okay so now you select the test bench file in the hierarchy here and then go down to your processes window um, open the iSim simulator one, hit the little plus there, and you'll see an option to simulate behavioral model. So you double click that, and it takes a second, it'll open your simulation window. Um, so let me move that here, so you can see it. And this is what this, this window looks like. So by default, it's actually already run this simulated file, and you can see it's at the finish statement. So if you tab over to the default.wcfg file, um, this is sort of a graphical representation of the input and output. And you might have to move some of these uh, windows around to get a good view here. And we'll also want to zoom way out um, because what's happened is you can see there's some input and output, but we can't really see what's overall going on. So use the minus thing to zoom out here. And there you go, you can see your whole input and output. So A and B are the inputs, Y is the outputs. Uh, so we go along and we say, for example, okay, A is 0, B is 0, output 0. Uh, B is 1, A is 0, output 0. A is 1, B is 0, output 0. Finally, when A is 1, B is 1, output's 1. Um, so there we can see sort of the whole logic diagram for the AND gate and you can use this to fill in your truth table. Um, if you want to rerun the simulation there is a button here that says restart and it clears it and then you just hit this run all, it looks like a little play button, runs it again, tab back to your window and there you can see it. Um, if you change anything you can either relaunch it, the easiest thing to do is just for example close it and it'll ask you to exit, you're just exiting the simulator and say you could change the gate to an OR gate, um, then just save that, come back to the main window here, and hit simulate it again, and you'll see the new output. So that's how you run a simulation with the Xilinx ISC tools.